All right, welcome to our masterclass. This is gearing up for your next backpacking trip, and I am so happy to be joined by our friend Dan Becker. Hey, Dan. Hey, thanks for having me, Matt, really. And we also have Emmett on the call as well. Say hey, Emmett. Hello, everybody. Good to be here. Thanks for being here. Well, sweet. Yeah, the point of this masterclass today is to kind of go over how to use Onyx Backcountry to plan your next backpacking trip. Um, and we'll kind of deep dive with the features, go over how to um, build your own route, customize where you're going to camp, um, plan around all the variables that you may encounter as you're going into it, and uh, share that route with your friends and have it ready to go in your pocket for when you're navigating when you're on the trail, uh, as well as to have Dan here to help you figure out exactly what gear you need to have a uh, enjoyable time while you're out there. <laughs> I can do that. So quick introduction. I'm Matt Matic. I am a marketing manager on the Onyx Backcountry team. Um, this is me with my puppy Bowie going for a little hike. Um, and I, I love going backpacking. The route we're talking about right now is the um, the Cirque of the Towers in the Wind River Range. Um, and it was oh, kind of so good. one of, yeah, it was one of my first like real big backpacking trips. Um, so I'm really excited to talk about it and to kind of relive that experience with Dan here. Um, and then this is our friend, Dan, who many of you know. Um, what a, look at that guy. What a good looking guy. Huh? <laughs> look at that. So manly. There's an arrow over my, over my eyeball though. There yeah. it is. Oh, there, there we go. Why? <laughs> um, <sweet. laughs> and we also have Emmett on the call. I didn't make him a slide, but um, <clears throat> Emmett's here. <laughs> There he is. It's like uh, it's like a late night talk show over here. <laughs> yeah. gotta, just chime in. Make yeah, jokes. just chime in whenever. <laughs> um, cool. So what's on the docket? So this is kind of how we're going to break down the uh, the meeting tonight. So we're going to go over just a touch of Onyx Onyx history and what is Onyx. We're going to go over the features of Onyx Backcountry. Then we're going to go into detail of how to create and organize your route. Um, then taking the plan into the field, and then we're going to do Q and A and the giveaway. So without further ado, let's get going. Um, so as attendees of this masterclass, we have a 40% off, um, a 40% off coupon. If you scan this link, this QR code right here, that'll bring you to a page that will give you all the details. Um, and I think the CX team will also be putting this in the chat. So look there, if you, uh, don't like QR codes as much as I do. That's huge. Cause the only discount I ever, as mine was 20%. That's double, Matt. That is double. That's double. Yes. So this is a great deal. Um, we hope you take advantage of it, and um, we'll we'll present this at the end of the class if you're not convinced yet. So, Devin Ashby says great value. Devin says great value. <laughs> Thanks, Devin. <clears throat> Devin's a buddy. So, a quick history of Onyx um, and Onyx Backcountry in particular. Um, so, Onyx um, Onyx Hunt was the first app that Onyx uh, created, um, and it was launched in 2009. And back in those days, it's it's easy to forget how quickly technology progresses, but Onyx nine. 2009, yeah. So Onyx was founded oh as a, uh, a company that would put a, a chip that had private land data and other information that hunters would find valuable into a Garmin device. And as mobile phones became more and more powerful, they, we saw the opportunity to grow into a mobile app that could work and with a device you already have in your pocket. And especially as these become more powerful, there's a lot more features like sharing between everybody else who has one of these in their pocket and et cetera. So as we really built the hunting app and became uh, more of a household name in that market, we looked at the world and we said, we have these awesome maps. What else can we do with them? And in 2019, um, Onyx Offroad hit the scene. Um, if you haven't used that app yet and you'd like to go off-roading and, and like me, if you like to go off-roading and camping and you're looking for you know land to camp on with your Jeep, um, it is an invaluable tool to make sure that you can find a good place to camp and that you won't wreck your uh, pavement princess. Um, and then in 2021, Onyx Backcountry launched. Um, it is focused on human-powered activities. So hiking, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, backpacking. Um, you can use it for mountain biking as well as backcountry skiing. Um, so all of the human-powered activities are kind of wrapped up in that with a focus on trail. Um, and, and features and layers are specifically devoted to that. Um, so at a glance, um, we are a multi-season app. So we have a trail mode and a snow mode. Um, that basically reshape the experience that you see based on the season. And that's really important this time of year is um, I go hopping from, you know, going on a mountain bike trip, like right now in the desert to going back up and skiing in my backyard. Um, Cause there's still snow up there. Um, 
we have over 77 or 770,000 trails in the app. Um, we have 2,700 or 27,000 trail routes and adventures. Um, we have 12 detailed ski guidebooks that we um, digitized from Beacon Guidebooks, which is some of the best backcountry ski guidebooks that are out there. Um, we offer offline maps and navigation. Um, we have color-coded public land ownership, as well as private land layers that show you um, exactly where you stand, whether you're on private or public land, and even who owns that land. Um, we also have customizable map markup tools, um, 70 plus waypoint icons. So the power of the app really comes from building your own experience and like linking together different routes, which we'll show you today. Um, in the winter, we have slope angle and slope aspect layers, which help you stay out of avalanche terrain. Um, and then we have a lot of dynamic information in the app as well, such as snow tell and weather. Um, we also integrate avalanche forecasts. You can use GPS tracking while you're out in the field and so on. And what's new at Onyx Backcountry? So the number one thing I'm most excited about that we just came out with is um, we have a really improved 3D experience on iOS. So now Android, iOS, and web, um, which will primarily be in web map today, just have this like a really immersive 3D experience that I hope comes through crazy. Um, as we're doing it's, this it's, master class. It's, it's kind of creepy crazy how realistic it is. <laughs> and it this is. area is just so beautiful that we'll be showing you today that like, you're going to want to pack up your bags and go there um, as soon as you can. Um, we also very recently rolled out this feature for elite users, um, which is our premium tier or, or our elite tier subscription. Um, but you can see recent satellite imagery and you can see it for our, the past two weeks and then kind of start looking back from there. So we will um, be showing this in the webinar why this is useful as a backpacker and a hiker. And then route builder. We're going to be doing this a lot of work in the route builder tool today um, just to show you how you can link up different trails. And you can build um, a route specifically around um, like what your mission is, how many miles you want to go in a day when you're backpacking, um, how much elevation you want to conquer, et cetera. And yeah. Dan, do you think I missed anything? No. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> seemed very thorough. What's that? It seemed very thorough. <laughs> he was. He was. That was, man, you're a thorough guy. I try to be, you know. You guys so, should, everybody should give Matt a thumbs up in the chat for that, because that was legit, way better than I could ever do. <laughs> so I wanted to also just take one quick step back and just show you, like, if you've never been the Onyx Backcountry app, um, this is what you can expect. So when you open up for the first time, you're just like, what is all this stuff and what does it do? So um, when you first open it, this is on the web map. So this is the computer version of the app. Um, and these all work pretty seamlessly together, which we'll go into a little bit in the future. But um, I always start with just like looking around the map. So like, as you start zooming into different areas, you'll see different points of interest kind of like pop up and you'll start seeing these different color codings, which shows like land ownership. So the purple is national parks. The green is usually national forests. When you see these dashed lines, that's wilderness areas. Um, this yellow is Native American reservation land. The yellow is often uh, BLM land. And then even as you get closer, if you're an elite subscriber, you get to access the private lands layer. So you can see landowner information up to your nearest neighbor and what exactly, you know, what their lot size is and everything like that. So pretty immersive and it, and we've trying to tailor the app to like work with your Zoom experience. So like the things you wanna see start appearing as you zoom in and as you start like toggling around. Um, we're gonna primarily focus on trail mode, but if you're up here in this corner, oh, let me do that again. If you're up here in this area, you can switch between your activity modes. So this is your trail mode and this is your snow mode. Um, snow mode is for your winter activities, your backcountry skiing, your cross-country skiing, your snowshoeing, and there's layers that are relevant to that. Um, not going to go into those today, but there are other master classes to watch that go into those in great detail. Um, and in terms of our backpacking layers, we have active wildfires, and I just like turning these on, historic wildfires, so you can see where things have been burnt, um, and then you can see um, air quality. So sadly enough, there's fires in Canada that are already distributing smoke across much of the West. Um, and you can see yeah, that it's sitting over here. here. It's yeah. over uh, my house last week in Wisconsin. Yeah, so with this feature, you can see currently like where the smoke is. And, you know, it can also help you figure out um, like where you should recreate um, based on that. And yeah, you can see some of these fires popping in over here. Um, these are current wildfires. Hey, that are yeah. I can't wait to tell people my favorite feature, but we're going to wait on that. <laughs> it's going to be a minute. 
I want to, I want, I want the suspense to linger. Okay. <laughs> All right. So as you're looking at the fires, you can see like exactly where they're burning currently and have them overlaid with what's really important, which is like, is the trail that I want to hike in the middle of a fire right now? Um, and then you can also see your smoke forecast. So where is the smoke going to move? Um, you click this one on and you can see like the smoke plumes and, and where they're going to be shifting throughout the next couple um, days here. So I'll keep these ones on. And then here's your route building tools. We're going to go into pretty good detail with, I think, all of these ones. Yeah. But as you build your route, like you're, you're creating these items that you can organize, you can share with your friends, and you're just customizing your map based on that experience. Um, you have your zoom buttons here, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then when you get into here, I'm actually going to jump into our area. So up in this corner, you can search for about everything that you want to look for. So if you want to search for a city, you can search for it. If you know which campsite you're going to, you can search for it. If you know the name of a trail, you can look for it that way. Um, so we're going to actually look at the route we're going to look at. Uh, circuit the towers, two pass loop. Amazing. And that will open up your discover card. So we're going to go a little bit more into this in detail in a sec, but I also want to showcase over here um, the switcher. So we have um, satellite, hybrid, and topo. So as you're going through here, you can, you can switch to a satellite view so you can see all of this terrain um, and see if there's trees or if there's rocks or, um, you know, if there's beautiful lakes, you can kind of get an eye in the sky. Um, hybrid is the same experience, but it overlays the, um, the topographic lines on the satellite image. And then if you toggle into 3D mode, you can see all of this experience in 3D as if you're yeah, standing here at the bottom of one of these mountains. So um, this is what I think just really sets us apart is just the quality of these 3D maps and how you can really get a lay of the land before you're out in the field. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to go over besides the stuff we're going to be going into hands-on in a sec. So Dan, without further ado, what is your favorite feature in Onyx Backcountry? It's, it's, it's on this page, man. I can see it from here. <laughs> it's in the lower right-hand corner. It's the recent imagery. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you so, got to tell them about that. That's crazy that you can do that now. That is super, super helpful, especially when you're like trying to pick out your hike. Like if you're going, <clears throat> like if you're like, hey, I want to go this now, you know, it, it's it's almost, what is this month? It's May. It's, all, yeah. see, it's going into June, you know, July-ish. You'd, you'd hope that snow would be gone. And you're like, why well, is it gone? Matt, yeah, how can we tell them if it's gone or not? The number one question I feel like everyone's asking right now is like, can I go backpacking right now? And right, especially exactly. if you're not from the area, you don't really know. So I'll show you this feature right now in full depth. So if you go to this toggle right here, this is only on web map right now and only for elite users. So if you're a premium user, you need to upgrade to elite to get this. Um, and it's only a web map. So if you're on your phone, you need to go onto the computer. But if you click this on, it'll show you a lower resolution image that's more recent. And it is pretty snowy up there right now. So if and I were it's you- got the date at the bottom there. So you can see this is just like maybe two, three weeks ago. Yeah, so there's it's kind of a composite of like two week blocks where we get our satellite imagery. So you can actually shift um, back so it gets snowier and yeah. snowier and snowier. Um, so you can actually physically see this. Um, and this is really useful for not only the hiker, but the backcountry skier as you're looking for like, is this, you know, is this big peak that I'm trying to climb hikeable or skiable? Um, is there still snow in my favorite places to go camping, et cetera? So this so, is really great. If you're new to hiking, <laughs> You probably already know you shouldn't go there right now. <laughs> There's a lot of snow. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be up there right now if I were you. Yeah. Um, well, awesome. So we've kind of centered around our um, our mission here. So um, this is the first thing I want to go over is just like the um, is just like what we have in our card, right? So like you know we have we try to our best to get the most information we can in here. So. With this hike, we have the route and it shows the route here. It's the one in green, um, tells you your mileage, 26 miles, um, 36 or 3,000 or 6,118 feet of elevation gain, about the same for loss. Your max elevation is going to be around 11,400 feet. Um, and it's recommended to run this in a loop. And here you can see your elevation profiles and stuff. So, um, and then yeah. some pictures. So this is great. And it's like, kind of like, it's what you'd expect, right? Like it, it shows you a little bit more, but the real questions and the real planning come in with like, when you're like, where, you know, where am I going to camp? 
like how many miles can I go? Like, how do I know where to right. camp? How do I know where the best places to go or to camp? So um, Dan, who hiked this last year, was grateful enough to share um, his route from last time, which is a good starting point too. Um, like if you have a friend and they do a hike and you're like, oh, I really, really want to do what they did. Um, you can, hold on, let me just jump to this. Use Onyx Backcountry to give you a share link, which Dan did. And we're just going to like start with his beta. Um, with pictures, everyone. There's even pictures there. Emmett didn't go on this hike though, did you? No, you, you weren't no. on this one. Yeah, no. Pre-Emmett. Pre this was, yeah, was pre-Emmett. No, you were around. You were around. This is when I went with my buddies though. This was the hike that oh, never made right, it to right, YouTube. Right, right, right. Yeah, so like that's the best thing is like if Dan if or one of your friends goes on a hike and you're like, how did you do it? What was your, you know, what yeah. kind of information? What yeah. would you do differently? Instead of them just being like, yeah. oh, I would go left at this and I would camp here. You can physically see this. So um, yeah. this is Dan shared me this link. Um, and it's got a bunch of waypoints. It's got his physical track of where he went. So this is going to be like one of our starting points with like, um, you know, where this is. And, and Dan and I are going to go over like good decisions he made and bad decisions he made and, and routes where he went a little off where he, should, he probably should have been. Yeah, um, it was a decision I thought was good until I realized by looking back at it now that mm, probably wasn't the best decision. <laughs> there are some hilarious comments coming in, by the way. There's some hilarious Someone's comments said, coming in. Like they want to know the route that almost killed you in the Grand Canyon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forget that. Really. <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to. We don't want to think about yeah. that. We don't, we don't talk about that. <laughs> we can do a master class on that too, if you want, Dan. Yeah, we can. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, Dan has shared this to me. It's a simple link. Instead of like moving GPX files around, um, it's just easy to share with Onyx owners. And we'll share how to do that at the end of this presentation. Um, so yep. we'll add it. So, you know, Dan, like, you know, want to talk through some of your favorite parts of this trip? Um, and yeah, like cool um, campsites. I can, I guess I would totally recommend this to even people who want to experience like a really epic trip that is fairly reasonable. I mean, the skill level, yep, yeah, there's camp. Is that night one? I think that's got to be night one. Yeah. So uh, it's just the skill level is it's probably intermediate. Would you say, Matt? I don't know. But I mean, even new people, if you got somebody that's maybe hiked before, this would be a, a it's not super difficult. There's a couple of spots that are difficult, but we flew into Salt Lake City and then we drove from Salt Lake to Big Sandy Trailhead, I think it is. We did not camp there. You can camp there, which you can see the campsite on Onyx. Uh, it's pretty easy to see. And then um but we we did that because we just wanted to get uh, going right away and um i had with me guys that go with me like once a year so where i backpack a lot they don't <laughs> and so uh i knew that this hike was going to push them a little bit but it wasn't anything terrible um and you can tell by the like the elevation profile the thing about the elevation profile in onyx um i like it um and it's good um, but all, most elevation profiles that you look at, it's really, yeah, like, there you go. It's like really condensed and it looks worse than it is, you know, like that 11, 419 there, um, you know, you're, that's 12 miles in. So you're, you're at elevation gain of like, what, 4,000 feet over 12, almost 13 miles, which, you know, it's just a steady up, but the elevation profile makes it look like it's way worse than it is. So we tried to plan... <clears throat> Um, we wanted, we probably could have done this trip. Most people could do this trip in maybe one or two nights. We wanted to have just a time just to hang out as buddies. And most of the guys that I go with, they're not into the miles. They just want to kind of go and spend time at camp and screw around. And so, uh, we picked campsites that were by lakes and we picked campsites that were prepping us for Texas pass, which a couple of the guys were scared to death of, because that was a it's it's kind of a brutal pass and we can get into that a little bit later you can see it on our elevation profile right here yeah. actually let's see if i can show it in 3d this is another uh beautiful part of the app is i remember coming around this field i was camping actually right here as well when i did it and then they're yep. like oh i heard about the pass i wonder how it's going to look to see this daunting steep climb ahead of you and you're already two days out and you're like oh okay let's yep. do it yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, it wasn't so cool. It I wasn't as like from, bad as we thought it was going to be. Yeah, it always looks worse when you see it from afar. Yeah, and then when you're halfway, you're like, "All right, we got this. This isn't good." Yeah, 
bad. Um, so I think from here, like we're going to kind of use the beta that Dan has and, and just build out our own route. And what we're going to try to do here is to use, um, we're going to try to make sure we're planning each day accordingly um, and building a route specific to each day. So we know exactly as we're going through it, the mileage um, and everything like that as we're, we're going through here. So we're going to start with day one. And that involves um, the first part of the journey, as Dan already alluded to, is just getting to the trailhead. So yeah. there's a lot of considerations like, you know, if you look, this is where the trailhead begins. And you are quite far from the nearest like major town. So as Dan said, like you guys flew into Salt Lake when you came here. Yeah. 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 So this is one of those things where, um, you know, you have to be prepared, you know, especially with this place. Like my thing that I remembered when I was out there was just like how far you are from how far away you are from everything. Right. Like even if you yeah. get to the trailhead, you are still I remember it felt like an hour drive just to hit a non dirt road. Um, yeah. Just yep. remembering that, right? Like you're going to be out, there's going to be no cell service for a long period of time and you need to make sure that you're not going to get lost. Um, so knowing where you're going to start is the first part of the journey for me. So as Dan mentioned earlier, um, big sandy campground. So we have recreation points in the Onyx Backcountry app that will show um, a lot of campgrounds as well as some information about them. And it actually links to the website, the government website that provides full details there. So like all their restrictions, if there's reservations, um, everything like that can be found right here with this link in Onyx. You don't need to guess um, if you have the right one. Yeah, so that's super helpful. Like if you're if you're worried that you're not going to get to your camp uh, to the trailhead on time, and you you know you're you're it's late at night, you you've got a place to stay essentially. You know you can find those things there. That's pretty cool. So I begin my journey every time with um, marking your parking. Oh the wrong thing. So we use these tools over here in the app um, and we select the waypoint tool. So once you select this, it'll drop a waypoint wherever my crosshairs are. Um, and then you say like, you see all these cars over here? This is where we're going to want to be, right? So right. once you have one of those, you can name it like parking. And that way you know how to get back to your car at the end of this adventure as well. Um, and then select, there's actually a parking icon here as well. And there's some other things you can edit in here as well. Like Dan showed earlier, you can upload photos in here. So like he has all the pictures of his campsites through this route, which is a really cool part of that. Um, you can change your colors. So if you want to color code, I often will do like really important things in red. Um, you can leave notes for yourself or your friends as well. So like if you're like, hey, it could be pretty crowded this trailhead. You should probably try to get there as early as you can or else you'd be walking a couple additional miles. You can leave notes for yourself or for your friend at a later date. Um, and then once you're in here, um, let's change this to red. Um, I like organizing all my trips in folders. So I'll just show you how to build that to start. We'll do add to folder. And then we'll just do add to folder. We'll create a new folder called search of the towers. And that way you can neatly organize this for later at the end of this when we're showing you how to share and all that stuff. <clears throat> so cool. We've established where we want to park. And the beauty of this is when you're on the um, Onyx Backcountry app on your phone, if you click that parking waypoint, at the bottom, there will be something that says navigate to waypoint. And then you can open directions to that waypoint in Google Maps or Apple Maps based on whatever you yeah, prefer. Right. And um, that's just a really good way to like make sure you're on the same page and make sure that you're going to exactly where you want to go instead of wherever Google thinks you should be going. Um, and it gives like the GPS. Yeah, for sure. Matt, I think something really important with what you just said is also that because it does, it takes you out and using the satellite imagery and all that stuff. Just, and also talking to like local rangers as you're planning your hike for stuff like this too. Some of these roads to a lot of these places require ground clearance, you know? So if you are having to rent a vehicle, like if you fly in somewhere, you got to keep in mind, like, you know, there there's places where we've gone where if we didn't have a Jeep or something like that, or a truck, we never would even would have made it to the trailhead. Yeah, my advice is if you're if you're going around in the West, if you're trying to hike 14ers or do whatever, a truck is never a bad yeah. choice. Um, it could snow. No, it's never. Do the year. upgrade for sure. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so now we've established where we're parking. Um, I think it's a good idea for us to plan like day one of our hike. So that's where this route builder tool really comes in handy. So up in the top right over here, this is the route builder tool. And once you select this, um, you can click 
basically anywhere to start and it'll snap to your trail. So we're gonna click on this one. This is the, the trail that exists here. You can see there's a couple other trail networks coming through here because there's a lot of access from this trailhead. There's a lot of different ways you can go out here. And when you build a route like this, it's gonna make sure that it's idiot proof that you don't start walking down the wrong trail when you think it's the right way and, and end up 20 miles away in the wrong direction from where you wanna be. It, it needs to be idiot proof. <laughs> Cause that, it may or may not have happened to me a couple of times. <laughs> Same, even yesterday I made a wrong turn, so. Um, so the beauty of this wrap builder tool is you can see it's kind of snapping, um, but as you click, it'll start giving you a little bit of data. So it starts popping in your elevation profile on the left-hand side, as well as your distance. Um, so it gives you kind of like a better read as you're starting to build your route. So I'm just going to pan out a little bit and look for Dan's night one. So we're just going to keep tickering along here and just making sure that we're not going an unreasonable amount of mileage. Um, Cause I think I, correct me if I'm wrong. It looks like you went about five to six miles each day on this hike. And yeah, I think we had, yep. Uh, yep. So we had driven already, what, five hours from Salt Lake. So yeah. your first day, you're going to make it easy. You're not going to get in as far as you can, but make it reasonable. <clears throat> yeah, as you continue to click, you can see like, here's an offshoot right here that you could say, oh, I think it's this way and go the wrong direction. So having yeah. this on your phone, so you can just glance at it and say like, no, it's this way. Um, it's always a good way to also prevent arguments with your group as you're going. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then I already saw one in the chat about uh, water water sources. Um, so this is another good thing to look at is like, as you're walking by these lakes, you, there, and on this one, there's actually a lot of water sources, but you wanna be very intentional with your backpacking trip and knowing like, hey, if we're gonna be climbing, we should probably be filling up our, our water filters um, and, and making sure we have water as we go past these water sources because they might not be in the future. So by, by climbing, you don't mean physically climbing, you mean climbing up an elevation just for people that maybe not have understood that. Yeah. So like, yes, yeah. if you're going up, you're getting away from water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So, you know, this is one lake. If you're like already blowing through your water in the first four or five miles, um, this might be a chance to refill. Um, and with this one too, like you might want to actually make the intentional decision to carry less water and fill it more frequently. Um, because you can see too here, like we're already going by the second lake as we begin our hike. Um, and we've established dad's lake as the first place we're going to camp. So um, we're going to look right here, you know, get a kind of lay of the land for dad's lake, really pretty looking lake. Um, and again, I, I kind of glazed over the fact that like what I'm doing when I'm working on this in 3D is you hold down the control button on your laptop. And then if you click, you can you know, you can toggle around and move up and down and pitch with your device. So, um, yeah, so we're just going to kind of continue to the campsite Dan had. So we're going to try to replicate that. And then we always get questions too about like, and then uh, hold on, I'm just going to do this first, but this will be our day one, um, day one hike. We're going to color code it. Um, grrr, let's do purple. So I know there's no purple trails in our app. And then you can also add this to our folder. So that is the first piece of day, that's day one right there in our app, six miles on the dot, um, 1000 vertical feet and so on. So Dan, when you're looking for the perfect campsite, what's your criteria? What's my criteria? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I like to be, I love to be near water, not too close because if uh, depending what time of year it is, you're gonna get lots of mosquitoes. There were a ton of mosquitoes when we went last year, but we got kind of lucky. It was a little windy, so they got blown out a little bit. But um, in the picture there, you could probably see my buddies. Both of them were in head nets on there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so stay, get, you know, I, I like and I, I want open and I want I want I want scenery. You know, I want to I don't want especially if I'm just cruising with my buddies, you just hanging out and I'm not crushing miles or something like that on this trip. I want to love my campsite, you know, and that that's what I like about these types of uh, satellite views is you can kind of look and see, okay, you can kind of gauge. Yep. That's a little open. You can look at the topo map then and go, okay, yep. It's um, uh, maybe flat, hopefully there. Right. So that way you can kind of say plan ahead and say, yep, um, this is where I want to go. And then um, when you get to places like this, this is a place where there's no permits. So um that's good and bad. It's good because you can just go whenever you want, but it's bad because it can often be crowded too. So 
you might not get the campsite that you wanted. Like this campsite that we were at, I showed up and there was like a tent half, half set up, but nobody was there. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? So we waited around for like 30 minutes and finally the guy came back and grabbed his tent and that was kind of weird, but we got our campsite. So um, yeah, it's not the most stellar campsite, but it was the one we could get. And yeah, it's just nice to be able to check out these profiles, be able to see what you're looking for. Yeah, I like looking in the satellite maps for flat campsites by using to topography and then yeah. like ones that aren't just total rocks. Um, so like you can see here, there's rocks, but then there's also these soft grassy and dirt patches to hang out in. Um, and then the other piece that you want to do too is um, we're going to go over like the regulations for this area. So um, one of which is, um, I, I'm spacing on it, but it's uh, 200, I think it's 200 feet from a lake is one of the regulations or hundred feet from a stream. Um, I might have that backwards, but I uh, wanted to show a life hack in the Onyx Backcountry app if you're ever not sure. Um, when you're out there, it's really but difficult. There, I think that was only at one of the lakes on this route though, right? Oh, the, the other one is a quarter mile from, from this one particular lake, which will yeah. But yeah, for every other campsite on this one, um, you wanna be hundred feet from streams. So like, how do you know that? And you can use um, this line tool over here to help you judge distances, even on the app. This so, is something I didn't know. So we were <laughs> eyeballing. So like yeah. really, I had no, I didn't know this feature existed and we were eyeballing these and uh, oh, I, look at that 154 feet. So I was uh, yeah. within my. Yeah, you're within, within 100 feet from the stream, which is exactly like where you want to yeah. be. So you're in the sweet spot there. Yeah. Um, so that's like, it's so hard to tell when you're out there, you're tired and you're like, this looks good and it's got a great view um compliance with those rules like that's another that's another thing that onyx backcountry app can help with because it's it's pretty hard to guess when you're out there um and you're a little bit like trail yeah, you'll see later on we did not guess so well <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we'll add that line just so we're sure and like you know as you're out there too like you can use the app offline even to help judge these distances as you're out there trying to figure yep. out your spot. <laughs> so awesome we have day one um so we'll start with day two so our goal again is Oops, keeping it pretty mellow and um, and uh, and getting ourselves to another really scenic campsite. So we're going to go back to the wrap builder tool and we're going to take start where we left off. Click here, and we'll start building the route and clicking along the way so we can kind of get a vibe of how far we're going. We're going by another beautiful lake, Marms Lake. Um, and then we're going to go up over here and around and like, you know, as we get further out, we can just kind of keep seeing like, okay, we've gone 2.2 miles, um, gone 3.8. And then this is my favorite campsite that we had when we were out here is yeah, Shadow Lake. Oh, it's beautiful. So, so we, we were actually going to go further, but we had talked to people ahead of time who told us that Shadow Lake was like amazing and that we should camp there. And then when we got to it, we were like, yeah, day's a little early, but uh, we're staying here. This place is amazing. And so five miles and just to show a little bit more of what the experience is, you can go is there into a picture of that. Is there a picture we could show of that campsite that I had? There, there? Let's see. I think you added one. Um, We'll click on the waypoint. Sorry, I'm going to get a little closer. Missing the target. There it is. Nice. I think I actually included one in the slideshow later too, but that's a pretty good campsite. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. And again, like just looking at this in 3D, it's like you can really figure out like, that looks like a place I want to camp. That looks fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's day two. And, you know, that's, that's a pretty good start. Um, you know, to a camp trip. So, um, but yeah, let's move into day three without much ado. Um, so yeah, as we do this too, day three, go back into the route builder tool and we'll start from where we left off this a little bit further away from the camp, but that's all right. And then today is the day that we go over the dreaded Texas pass that we already talked about. So we're just going to pass all these beautiful lakes, Billy Lake, Billy's Lake, Barron Lake, and then Texas Lake, which is where I assume that, um, get the name from chicken or the egg i don't know so yeah you can see right here just the steepness of this and just you know get a good night's rest and a good breakfast because you're going to be punching over elevation um as you go up this yeah. route so yeah switch backy kind of scrambly um but as you 
Let's see if I can do this beautifully in the app. As you cross over this vista, it is one of the most breathtaking views I think I've ever had. The most aha, oh wow moment. It's just coming I've into been, been a lot of places. In, I've been a lot of places. That was probably the most epic view I've ever gotten was the top of Texas Pass. It was incredible. Yeah, it's it's so so pretty up there. And I just remember having my breath taken away when I went to the top of this Texas Pass. So um yeah, I'll we we'll go over regulations in a second, but one of the things that our um our card for this hike has is is the call out that this particular lake, because of how beautiful this valley is, is at risk of kind of being um, you know, overloved, so to speak. So I, I spoke to a ranger today and they say that right now they're encouraging people to camp um at least a quarter of a mile away from the lake. So um as you can see here, like I don't like last year, I don't even um, like Dan tried to estimate how far he was. And I think when we were looking yeah. at this, you were halfway there. Um, yeah, we, so we, yeah, we had, that was a big day because going over that pass um, and it, it was just, a, it was just a, everybody was just tired. And so we had, I thought, you know, just you, your body lies to you at that point. You think that you're far enough off trail. And I really thought we were. But after now using this tool, how close? I mean, we were way off. Like we weren't even halfway as far as we needed to be, I think. So if I had had that tool, I know that I could have gone a lot farther into the woods and been um, compliant. Yeah, you're 189 yards and a quarter mile is 440. So let's look what that looks like. So we just drew this line here um, and we can actually just kind of drag the endpoint of it and say like, okay, we actually want to be like in this. I just said that's so cool. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, so you want to be at least this far out and kind of like in a in a radius like this, right? So like in this kind of sweep is where you're going to want to be. So like, again, like it's so hard to guesstimate how far you are. And, you know, you're like, I think that's a football field away or that's a couple football fields. Yeah. And you never really yeah. know. So like and the beauty of this app is really just like having the tools to always make the responsible and decision. And, so, and the other thing too is that, it's that particular lake that you have to be that far away from. There's no yes. other lake anywhere that they require that. So. Yeah. And it's just because this valley has gotten a lot of love. Um, so like we'll do can, loan. Can we right. zoom into that campsite? Because there's something I want, and really important I wanted to show people. Yeah, absolutely. Just let um, me put. Because somebody in. mentioned talking about, about water sources earlier. And when yeah. you look at maps um, and you're looking at topo maps or like, um, you know, just maps that have permanently marked water sources, um, even though they're permanently marked, doesn't mean that they're always going to be there. Some of those are seasonal. Some of them sometimes of what, you know, they dry up, whatever. Um, and on this one, it, what there was, um, where we got water wasn't marked on the map, but we knew there was water there because you could, uh, I don't know if you could see it up here, but you can see it in the satellite imagery that there's a line going through like kind of where we were at and we knew that that was a creek coming through there and it's a small creek it's only like maybe two feet three feet wide but it was enough for us to be able to handle you know cooking dinner and eating dinner and stuff like that that night so that's one thing to to consider when you're looking and planning hikes like this is being able to check out um not just what people have marked as permanent water sources but kind of looking at these things and going okay that's obviously some there's something there yeah it's it's crazy like what you can kind of see with these satellite maps um yeah and because a lot of times too you can see like either a fire pit or like even a camp when the satellite images yeah yeah it can give you like it's tough to see it's tough to see in this shot you got here but it is there is uh there's something there (laughs) i there it is to the left yeah, oh, to yeah. the left there where that purple, that purple and blue line meet down there. If you right there, yep, right down there. If you zoom in there, you can see a line. Yep, see that there? Oh, yeah, That's yeah. That's a creek running through there. So we went, oh, I know there's going to be water there. Yeah, and again, I see you have a picture of your campsite here as well. Um, yep. Which is awesome. Like the beauty of like sharing an experience with your friends and really showing them where you were um, with the photos yeah. is just an awesome way to, to show this. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, this is the view and the, and this is what the payoff is for this hike is, is just this valley in the Cirque of the Towers. Um, it's a Mecca for climbers. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you know, unbelievable for backpackers. Um, it is, it is what you hike for, for this one. And you just really want to make sure you take your time here and get to, to experience it. 
um, and do so in a way yep. that can preserve it for generations to come. Um, cool. So that's night three. Um, and yeah, like when you're picking a campsite, like just using that line tool for the next one is, is probably your best bet. So we'll go into night four. Um, Dan, this is where you made your, your wrong turn. Um, I did. So, I mean, <laughs> so last time, we, yeah. yeah, we were supposed to go back the way we, or we weren't supposed to go back the way we came. We were supposed to continue around, you know, left there around Lonesome Lake and then take up what's called Jackass Pass. But I don't know what it was, but we ended up going right on Lonesome Lake and we ended up taking the rock climbers route, <laughs> which was like halfway through this route. I'm like, man, this is uh, there's a lot of scrambling going on here. And somebody busted out Onyx at that point because nobody had busted out Onyx in the morning. Like we just were following the trail. We, you know, we just made a wrong turn and waited and we were just like, oh, I, we're taking the rock climbers route. So we just had to do a ton of scrambling through that whole thing. And we just kept going because we'd already, you know, gone far enough. But yeah, for sure. If, if I had pulled out my uh, app from camp like I was supposed to, I would not have had to scramble those rocks. Yeah. And that's like one of the at a glance things to look at with our app is these, there's the black line, the blue line, and those are our like difficulty ratings. So black is yeah. more technical and more steep. Um, and the blue is more gradual and, and less punchy. So yeah. that's, that's like another way at a glance for like, which one of these do I take? Like, that's a good way to help you. Um, so yeah. we're going to, we're going to build on this way and I'll show you like a little bit of like, like issues that I ran into with, with the, uh, the route builder and how to address them. So like some of these routes, sometimes like there's just like a, a little bit of space between these and the app won't like let you push through them and connect them. So there's also this point draw feature in here. And this helps you too, when you're going off trail or like anywhere that's not a designated route is you can snap to a route and then you can kind of go off the beaten path with the point draw. And then you can kind of connect it again. If you go back to the snap to you click again and then, Hey, we're right back. I lost you, Matt. Can you hear me? Sweet. Dan, can you still hear me? Oh, there you go. You're back. I got you now. Oh, did I lose it? Yeah, it's saying my AirPods are connecting, but they're not turned on. So interesting. So yeah, so we just did a little snap too um, and just got ourselves to the top of Jackass Pass um, from where we were. And then I'm going to switch back to point draw again to get over this next one. We didn't, we didn't even go over that path, man. <laughs> and then snap to so this is the second major pass on this hike um and then once you crest here it's a really awesome view of um arrowhead lake yeah 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 you know call it arrowhead lake kind of looks like an arrowhead if you ask me yeah i got a picture of it from from that vantage point and that's when yeah right yeah you just go huh yep yeah, that's where they call it. yeah that's it yep now i get it <laughs> yeah that's Smart a really name. Cool just these when all these people name their lakes yeah and just these huge walls surround it and again like this is one of those things where you're like oh we want to camp by arrowhead lake and if you look at the satellite view that's a that's that's a no for me you know what i mean like it is uh really rocky and really kind of exposed everywhere and not very flat so like this probably wouldn't be the best um the best place to go camping um no there's so. no there's no place to camp there and it was, and yeah, you know yeah. if you went to the right or the left when you were... we went to the right we did okay. go to the, did it maybe my route didn't show up but yeah we went to the right yeah and and that's a that's a great um point like you you when you're planning your hikes you're thinking well i'll just camp at the next lake but if you can if you don't have something like this to be able to look and see from all the different angles that you can get from topo maps satellite maps all that stuff you know you may find yourself in a world of hurt because it's the end of the day and you're toast and you're tired and you're like thinking you're going to end up at camp and all of a sudden you got another five ten miles to go right because you're you're not gonna because you didn't plan the, the way you should have yeah and the same can be said about water sources like um last summer we were on the um the white room trail in moab and there were some bike packers and they're like where how do we get down to the water and there's just sheer hundred foot cliffs that go down to the river and we're like, there is yeah. water sources on this. Like, so like kind of being like, oh, we're following the river the whole time. Or, oh, there'll be lakes. Like, you don't know if there's going to be access to those lakes or not. 
Um, and, yeah. And this yep. can help you determine that. Matt, have you ever been out and uh, and like not downloaded your maps ahead of time? Did you ever have you ever gotten to like where you forgot to download your map? Download your map. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Many That's times. Worse. So I'll show you and that was, and, and how to be foolproof with that plan as well. Oh really? Because <laughs> Emmett, you had a remember when we were in Texas, Big Bend National Park. We I think we did it on like a plane or something. What what but but what, but what happened where you you had to go back? To yeah. That? So yeah, this is my favorite onyx and anecdote ever so my first ever trip with dan was to big bend national park in texas um and one of those videos from the trip it's called gear under 40 or something we did a little skid about how dan forgot a battery bank in the car and then i offered to like go get it the reality of the situation that i'm willing to admit is that i forgot the battery <laughs> bank <laughs> um and so I'm just super thankful. We're both thankful that um, I had the Onyx app downloaded because I'm positive that I would have not been able to make it back to the car, um, you know, by myself without without a map. And yeah. so it was just a really, really great example. That was your first how, time using first it. Ever trip, yeah. First ever yeah. trip. I was kind of scared. I was, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's like a perfect testimonial for us um, because that's one thing too, is just like, it's so easy to get turned around and, the sun starts going down and you've, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of like, I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, and that's what exactly. the panic puts it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, we've arrived at camp four. Um, this is where I camped uh, in my two day or three day, two night push of this. So again, clicking on the waypoint, um, it doesn't look like you had a photo in here, but um, I did not really, I didn't have a photo. Oh man, man I started let but, you down. This was a good one. Um, you know, big, big lake. It's kind of like the last draw, all the vertical, climbs are done um water sources and, and this big open area over here where there's a lot of other campsites and you can actually see like i think this is a tent looks like a tent to me orange um so you can see oh, like yeah, yeah. Of other camps um and that's another good indicator of like hey i'm in a place that i probably should be camping because historically people have camped here um, yeah so sweet yeah and you know close enough to the water you can refuel um etc and then we'll just push through and just do it the last night before, so we can talk about other things like how to get prepared with gear and how to make sure that you have um, the bear spray, the bear boxes, the uh, you yeah, know, all the things you'll need to make sure that you are safe in this um, pretty wild country out here. Uh, yeah. Let's... Continuing to go along the route. I can't remember. This is grizzly ter territory, right? I think yeah, I might. think it is. Yeah. There's grizzlies out here. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Okay, there's the parking. Got a little disoriented there. Happens on the trail and on the app too. Um, okay. So yeah, we're just pushing through. You want to make sure sometimes it'll say the fastest way is all the way around a loop. So just making sure you have that kind of dialed. And then we'll see familiar terrain here as we intersect and lollipop back with the original trail you're on. Then you're back to the car after a five mile final day hike out. That's day five. And a five hour drive back to Salt Lake. <laughs> so sweet, we have our route. Um, so yeah, like now that we have it, it's all here. And there's, that's what we're doing. Um, and the beauty of this too, if you wanna like see it in a more clear way, um, you can actually oh, the zoom bars in my way. Hold on, keep route, save. Okay, perfect. So you can actually like turn off of like all the other trails right here um, and all the rich content on them and just get a better like visualization with less clutter of like where we're going. And that'll be the purple line that goes around here, around all these lakes um, and shows you exactly of like where, where we should be camping and where we should be responsibly camping. Um, and one other thing I want to share before we go into it is just like how to prepare for your hike. Um, so one thing that I want to bring up too is the satellite imagery. Like again, like, man, that looks awesome. Let's get in the car right now and go. Uh, probably not, right? There's lots of snow. That's going to turn this from a enjoyable Dude, sun, you know, great that, time. That, I can't yeah. even tell you how much of a game changer that is for somebody like me that seriously, that lives in the Midwest. Because like um, this time last year, we were um looking for some place to go this time of year 
and a lot of it's snow covered. A lot of it, a lot of it was, a lot of it wasn't. And that was such a big deal. I was having a call every play, every, every time you'd find someplace you think you can go. Now you're having to jump on the phone, talk to Rangers, talk to these people, you know, get, it's like, this, that, that is such a time saver to be able to just click back and go, Nope, there's snow. You know, it's a, that's amazing that you could do that. Yeah. And also extremely scary. Yeah. Hashtag Elon Musk. <laughs> huh? That's what so, Starlink is like for doing. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens when cell phones are more communicative and offline maps are a thing of the past and you can just do all this stuff, you know, in the field. Oh, man. Yeah. Crazy. So we just spent this whole thing building the routes and separating all these segments into different days. And we have this awesome folder here in the My Content section. And this has everything we just built right here in this folder. And I can hit the share button and I'm going to share it with everybody in the chat right now. Let's see, chat. I'm going to do to everyone. And yeah, if you'd like, and you have an Onyx account, um, this will uh, automatically populate into your account right now. If you click that link and you can play with it on your own. Oh, um, so good. I, I recommend this. This is one of my favorite hikes ever. Recommend it. Yeah, it's it's so fantastic. And it, it changed my life, I feel. Um, some of the other dynamic information we have in the app that I just want to show is like, you know, if you're looking at like, when do I want to go up here? It feels pretty warm where I'm at right now and in the desert of Sedona. And you're like, Hey, you know, the high Alpine's probably melting out quick. Right. So down here is your weather. So this pulls in point weather system. So as you move it around to the different elevation parts, it'll even give you an idea of like what it's like at this elevation versus what it's like in this valley about this lake. Um, and you can have your sunrise, your sunset times, your seven day forecast, um, your hourly forecasts, as well as your moon phases. So if you're trying to plan a full moon hike, you can see that in here as well. Matt, can, can you explain, that? I think this is important for people to know too, can you explain how, um, how Onyx finds its weather points to begin with? It's not because like, they're not like, you know, finding it off some TV station and punched it in. I mean, this is legit. These are, these are, uh, points where weather's being pulled right and then what yeah. this is doing is it's actually probably through some sort of an algorithm deciding using going using the top of whatever elevation to change it based on how high you are that's how it knows to you know decrease temperature and that's super helpful yeah i i'm spacing on i think it's weather underground that we use yeah that's it yep that is it you're right yeah so I, we integrate with their data and and kind of tailor it for our needs um, which yeah. they, the data there is just, um, fantastic. So, um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's pulled from, from weather like, weather. it's <laughs> pulled from the, the most local reliable spots. It's not like, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's tons like, of for other instance, stations. Yeah. That it pulls. Yeah. Like, cause sometimes you can pull into these mountain towns and it's like 70 degrees and you're like, Oh, I'll be great. And then you get up into the mountains and all of a sudden it's like 35. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I deal with that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the next thing I want to show is just like how to prepare yourself for the hike. Um, and that involves like going and downloading your offline maps. So one of my hacks that I like to do is um, when I am getting ready to go offline, um, I'll actually queue up the offline map that I want to use. Um, so it'll download to my phone. So everything we just built on the web map is synced with all with your Onyx account. So between my phone and this web experience right now, I don't really need to do anything. It's already set up to ready to go, but you still want to make sure that your phone has the map downloaded. So um, you click over here to this offline map section, and this is a way to just like get your phone ready to download. You can also do this directly on your phone, but I still like doing this just to make sure I don't forget. Um, so you do new offline map, and then you can select your resolution um, and zoom out a little bit and try to encompass the whole area in which we'll be going. So medium resolution, I think is going to cover it for what I want to see on my maps. Cause I usually, when I'm in the field, we'll just use topo and, and the lines that I created and just follow those. Um, but you can also switch to a higher resolution, which um, it'll also tell your estimated download size um, or a low. If you want to go for like a really big area and you just want to like know where the roads and the trails are, and you, um, you don't need highly detailed satellite imagery. Um, this is a really good way to go and just, you know, have yourself with a little bit of context, wherever you're at. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, get this for my medium. It tells me my estimated download size, so I know what to expect on my phone. I have way too many pictures of hikes and dogs on there, so um, space is very yeah. precious at the moment. Um, and then we can name it. So we're going to name this Wind River Range. 
And then this will give you the, the ultimate warning again, like about forgetting to download your maps. You're not done yet when you get to this point. It's just kind of queuing up the range. So you need to go onto your phone and do the next steps. And I'll show you how to do that now. So I'm going to switch over to my cellular device here. Hold on. All right. Let's see if this works. All right, can you see my screen? Yep, yep. Nice. So this is the, uh, hold on a sec, I gotta reopen the app. Sometimes when you build stuff, it uh, will yeah. take a minute. But yeah, here it is. So re refresh the app. If you don't see the content you created, uh, populate, but here's the route. This is what we just spent uh, 40 minutes building um, and, and the plan for the day. So um in the bottom i can you can see my mouse right yeah uh, yeah in the bottom corner right here this is offline maps button if you select that you'll see this is the map that i outlined on the web map so um you just hit download um i am on cell network right now sweet and then you just want to make yeah, sure don't that forget to do that <laughs> yeah so if if you don't download this and you show up in the wind river range i mean there is no cell service either on this hike or even yep. within an hour of the trailhead it is, it yeah. is nowhere, Bill. Um, so, you know, you can do it that way, or, you know, you can always do this on your mobile device as well. Same experience, um, you know, five miles, 10 miles, 150 miles, and your resolution. So yeah. uh, a little bit different, but I always like making sure we have it. And then my thing is I also would like to test. So um, when I'm in the backcountry too, I often will go into airplane mode. So my phone isn't trying to ping cell towers and kill its battery. Um, it really helps me save battery life. Um, but I also like to test the go offline button right here that I just toggled on. And then yeah. once you're here, this is what your map's going to look like when you're in the field. Like this Onyx app is not currently using any, you know, any service right now. So you can see like when we were on web map, some of these areas were a little bit more detailed. Yeah, you can see where I forgot to turn off my tracker too. And I walked around camp for eight yeah. hours. <laughs> So like, this is one thing too, is like the trade-off. Like, do you want to save space on your thing and you already know where you're going or do you want it to be so detailed that like you can zoom in and see everything we saw before? If you go with that high resolution tier, you can actually see that to that level. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. So I think we've gone over everything. We've gone over sharing. We've gone over downloading offline maps. Um, Somebody's asking if the wor if it, wor if it uh, works in airplane mode. Yes, it does. It does, yeah. That's so what especially- I do. I, if I, yeah. Yeah. Again, if you're a backcountry skier, like I am, um, the best practice is to never, um, to have your phone in airplane mode when you're in the backcountry because your beacon will interfere with your cell phone. Um, so we've designed it to work flawlessly and perfectly. Um, even when you're out of cell service, um, sorry, I just got to find my screen. It disappeared. And then we'll go into the giveaway and the Q and a, um, here it is. The giveaway. The giveaway, giveaway the of the backpack. Part. The backpack. Look at how nice and shiny. <laughs> it's actually really dirty. It <laughs> stinks. I mean, it smells. That's, this one, it has you. one of your guys are getting isn't going to smell, though. I hope. Let's, let's mm -hmm. taste and like pull that out of the back room somewhere. <laughs> cool. Um, so... Um, I, again, I talked a little bit earlier and, and actually talked with the park ranger before this call about the rules and regulations. Never feel weird about calling ranger. They are the best people to yes. talk about certain conditions. Oh my gosh. Trees down. Like they yes. love these areas and they love talking about them. And they're very excited when you. Sometimes um, too much. You sit on the phone. You're like, man, I called this guy. It's been like 30 minutes. All, right. <laughs> All I wanted to know was where to park. No, they they're love super it. helpful. Yeah, and it, it can be confusing they do. They do. navigating they do. government Rob. websites and, and following. So just Rob. You remember Rob? Handsome Rob? Yeah, handsome, handsome Rob. Rob. What's, what's up, buddy? In the chat. What's up, Rob? All right, Good sorry. Man. <laughs> it's a friend of ours. <laughs> it's a celebrity in here? Handsome Rob. Yeah, yeah, celebrity, yep. yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the regulations that we're, we're coming away from. So um, leave no trace, pack in, pack out. Um, your group size, limited to under 15 people. Um, campfires are prohibited above tree line, which most of the areas we were in was above tree line. So bring that thicker sleeping bag because you're not going to have a fire. Um, and then we had some questions about um, the bear stuff. So proper food storage is required in these areas. It is grizzly territory. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw one from the top of Texas Pass when I was out there. It looked like the size of a Prius. Oh, really? <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, so hard canister, which is um, actually have it outlined on the see any. page. Um, and then uh, also you can hang, um, which I am not a huge fan of the hang. I, I prefer using a canister, um, which seems more secure. And then your food also could sometimes get stuck in the tree if you throw it too high. <laughs> and then you have to climb the tree to get it. That happened to me once, true story. Um, camp locations, as we said, 200 feet away from the lake, 100 feet away from streams, and a quarter mile from Lonesome Lake. Um, in wilderness areas across the United States, uh, no drones. And then stay the trail, no shortcutting switchbacks, and then follow your wilderness ethics. Uh, yeah, anything those else? are all pretty standard. Those are all yeah. pretty standard for the most part, yeah. Sweet. So next one is our, oh, our gear, our essential gear and creature comforts. Um, Dan, you're, you're the man for this one. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Let me, let me just talk about this real quick. So, um, I went on this trip and I promised myself I was not going to bring a camera. Cause like, this is like, this is you know, when you backpack for a living and then you go backpacking with your buddies, it's, it feels like work, but I was like, this is going to be my vacation. I'm not going to bring a camera, but guess what? What did I do? I meant he always, and, and it's happened a couple of times where you've said that you weren't going to bring it. And I brought a camera, right? So I bring my camera, but then I came back and I was like, well, let's make a video. And I think people would want to know maybe kind of what I bring when I'm not being told what to bring. Cause a lot of times I'm testing out gear or like I have a sponsor or something like that or whatever. This was like all stuff that I just, this was, this is what I wanted to take. So this is the actual gear list that I took on that trip. So I thought that, and Matt did this. He put this slide together. I did not do that. That's like, Matt, I want you to come work for me, please. It's like, <laughs> Leave on X and come work like for me. Because that is so good. From a magazine and just making a Christmas wish list. So I'll just yes. send this. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. 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 So, so like for me, it's, you know, there's the essentials, right? Your backpack, your, your hiking poles, your trekking poles. And, you know, Dan is the one who will tell you which backpack which hiking poles, which trekking poles, um, your sleep system, you know, your food system, your the nutrition, like what you eat on the trail. Uh, Dan, like, how do you normally eat when you're on the trail? Dehydrated or? Um, it, yeah, it, it depends. It depends. Like, so uh, this particular trip, we did do a lot of freeze dried meals. Um, sometimes though, like if, like with this group of guys, one of them likes to be the camp chef. So we'll each like pack in heavier items, you know, cause we know that we're going to get this epic meal, right? So we'll, we're willing to take a little bit more weight with us. Like somebody might bring potatoes or something, you know, where, you know, but yeah, this was, that's, that's how we usually do it. And then it depends on like, if you're going to do that, then you're obviously going to bring maybe a skillet with you or maybe some other ways to like a spatula or something to cook, you know, easier and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And like the main consideration with like the want versus need for backpacking is you're going to have to carry all this for, for four yep. to five nights exactly. on your back. So like, do you need, yep. you know, the, 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 the 12 pack of beer or should you just, you know, <laughs> pack uh, you know, that's a, <laughs> give <a> touch. <laughs> Emmett, if Emmett's going with, uh, it's a, it's more of a need. L liquor's quicker. That's, that's my philosophy with the back. So. <laughs> 500 IQ right there. <laughs> So, you know, for these hikes too, like looking at the weather, like you're going to want to make sure that you have the proper clothing. So Dan, in your gear list on this trip as well, um, you know, the rain jacket, the puffy, um, the rain pants, you know, carrying that extra pair of socks always feels like a million dollars when you yeah. put them on. Um, and then you guys had the uh, the mosquito nets, which I didn't have and I was getting destroyed. It made me go to bed early. It, it was, oh my gosh, that was like an absolute must. And um, the, we, I normally don't bring rain pants on trips. But I knew that like, I don't know if like, I guess if you're if you're watching this from this area, like Wyoming, like even like uh, the Dakotas, that is like the most unpredictable storms go through there always like there's always scattered storms that go through there. So yeah, the, the rain pants came into came in handy, but they're only three ounces, the ones that I brought. So yeah, that's not too bad. Um, navigation, Onyx backcountry, <laughs> offline maps downloaded. Um, and then also for a hike like this, um, it's not a bad idea to have a paper map for backup. Um, and you can like use the route that you built in Onyx Backcountry and, and draw it with a Sharpie on that map. So if your phone dies, if you're smash your phone, taking a selfie, um, you have a reference that you can navigate your way out yep. of there. Yep. Um, tech. So uh, Garmin and Reach devices are great for when things go wrong. Um, you want to bring your charging brick if you want to keep your phone alive for all the great photos and Onyx action. 
your headlamp, and then, as Dan said, your camera. Almost a crime not to bring a camera yeah. on the bike. So, cool. <laughs> um, we had the question about bear spray. I already saw. Um, I personally would stay strapped with bear spray on this hike. Um, it's grizzly territory. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, it's just you don't want to take that chance. But it's it's so you'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, right? Yeah, totally. Um, and then cleanliness, like, you know, this, this might be sometimes the creature comforts, like, you know, hand sanitizer, toothbrush, like sometimes, you know, you can, you can, it depends how your friends are. If they don't like, if you don't, if they're like, you're too stinky, you got to walk like at the back of the pack here. Um, you might want to bring yeah. them those. Um, and then also yeah. in areas that are becoming more popular like this, like wag bags, um, which are, if you're not familiar with those, it's this one right here, which is basically a middle of a mini portable toilet. Um, are a pretty great thing to use for ethics now. They're honestly not that bad, um, but it, it's it's great. Like, is, is that lonesome lake issue we were talking about earlier? It's the problem there's human waste yep. and everyone kind of staying yep. there yeah. and pooing. Yep. So if you bring it out with you, uh, do it. <laughs> so. I, I, you know, it's, it's, I, I actually started bringing those with me on most hikes when I remember to bring it, because sometimes it's not always easy to remember those, even when, you, when, they're, when they're not required. Because sometimes you get to these places and it's, it's nasty. And I just don't want to be one of those people that yeah. leaves that kind of a mess. Sweet. All right. So if you want a full list of that gear, um, this QR code will bring you there. Coincidentally, it's the same thing as that 40% off discount that I talked about earlier. Um, so at the bottom of that, as you scroll past the awesome Onyx deals, um, you will see Dan's video where he breaks down everything that was in his bag on that Wind River trip, um, as well as a full gear list um, with links. So you can check out all the gear that he used. And now the most exciting part is the giveaway. Oh my oh, gosh. I'm so they're nervous. Gonna they're going to want phones out. Gonna QR they're going to put this in the chat as well with my CX team. Um, so this is your chance. So all you need to do is enter your information. Um, I am going to select the winners and we'll get you the backpack or 25 Onyx backcountry hats are going out. So there's a lot of stuff to win um, and it doesn't hurt to try. So, so I'm going to give this another second. Um, entries close tonight. This is just for you guys for sticking around. So this is just for you. So this is a pretty like, yeah, your chances are pretty good. Mike, did, come here, Caden. Come here. Come here. Let me say let everybody say hi to Caden real quick. Hold on. This is my son. He's the one switching the camera angles. Hello. What a good looking kid. Okay, you can go now. <laughs> bye. Say bye. He just turned Caden. 16. Just turned 16. Okay. Um, there's been a so many Happy questions. Birthday in the chat. So I would love to try to get some of these. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can open them up. Also, huge thank you to our CX team. They have been typing like nobody has ever typed before. Oh, really? I didn't even notice any questions. Um, oh, man. So, so thank you so much. Um, I'm going to try to pull up the questions so we can answer them live. What a um, great they've group. Selected for us. Uh, I can't find it, but I will find it. Uh, here it is. Okay, cool. So um, I'll ask this to Dan. So what is your, um, what is your base weight you're looking at for your trips? With, oh, with in your... general? Oh man. Not your I, weight. I, I... <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, it depends. I, I try to keep it as low as I can just because we carry, how many, how much do we carry? Like, like in camera gear, like eight pounds, at least 10 pounds. Sometimes yeah, 10 a camera pounds, gear. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we're carrying drones, DSLRs, cameras. I mean, we got, so I don't know. It, it I, I probably realistically average anywhere from 12 to 15 pounds base weight. Maybe sometimes I go lighter than that if I like don't bring a chair or something. But yeah, that's what I try to do. I know it's not easy because it gets expensive, but. Yeah. Or if you're like me, sometimes you're just like, I don't need this. I don't need this. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's <laughs> a lot yeah, of like, why didn't bring and I don't actually have what I need. <laughs> I knew I was going to need toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> That's my thing with chairs. Like, that's yeah. Sometimes I mean, you you don't want to bring it, but then you always want it. Yeah, he he he's he's kind of a he's yeah he's tough to convince sometimes. He thinks he's <laughs> gonna sit on a rock, and then he's sitting in my chair when we get there. Yeah, I fall into that category. I'm always like, I don't need a chair, and then I'm the guy in someone else's chair the whole time. Yeah, you're the one borrowing yeah. my chair, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so water sources. We talked a lot about this, um, but like this particular one, the water source issue was kind of simple right? Like, you know, there was an abundant yes. peaks and streams, Tons but like Dan, like your perspective on the, uh, the rim to rim, 
Um, like that is one that you have to be incredibly intentional about your water sources. Yeah, so how do you sure. approach that planning? Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's a tough one. So <clears throat> when you're, especially when you're in a desert environment like that, if you, it's, it's so easy to think you have enough water and then you realize you don't have enough water. So we, um, just stock up whenever we see water. So yeah. if there's water available, even if we think that there's water, like, like if the map or something or anything gives information, tells us like two miles, there's, you know, more water and we think we're going to be fine. We still fill up because if that water source is dried up, which it can be, especially in desert areas like that, you're, you're going to be in real, real hurt, a lot of pain. You're, you don't want to be dehydrated out there at all. And it happens so fast in the desert environment. Yep, like, sure like does. Sedona, and the opposite but, can happen. The yeah. opposite can happen when you drink too much water. Like your body just does things it's not supposed to. And you can get really sick doing that too. So, yeah, totally. Um, let's see, Dan, we talked a little about the bear spray, but um, any other personal protection you like to carry? Do you ever, do you ever carry a handgun or anything like that? Uh, I don't. Little known fact about Dan Becker is I did used to be a firearms instructor. So for those uh, people that uh, need to know that, yes. But uh, I, I, typ I typically don't because it's just kind of a pain to travel with. Yeah, they're heavy. <laughs> they, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, we had a question about what membership level I was showing in the class. Um, so during this presentation, I was using Onyx Backcountry Elite, which is our like top level um, service. So the main... Um, the main uh, the main thing that like differentiates that from um, any other or, or other Onyx Backcountry product is the private lands layer, which shows you who owns whatever private land parcel there is, um, and then the satellite imagery, and then there's another feature called Terrainix, which is kind of more of a backcountry ski feature, but um, this is our newest tier. It's kind of leveraging that private lands layer is kind of the the main thing that people want us want the app for. Um, so everything else that you saw in this presentation, like trails, waypoints, offline maps, um, all of that is available in our um, premium tier as well, which is twenty nine ninety nine a year. Or um, what was the math for our forty percent off discount for this call? Less than that. Cup of coffee, Starbucks these days. Yeah, it's like six <laughs> bucks a month, I think. Right? Not yeah, either. it's cheap. Um, somebody called me out and said there was no first date in my packing list. That is a really good call out and i apologize that <laughs> on mine there wasn't n n i don't think on yours and i i totally spaced on it as well really cover all, all the bases um, it's, yeah. so dan there like, was i definitely brought one carrying? like what I is definitely brought one. Pack? like what, what do you usually bring with you me um my, I, I i bring a uh the adventure medical kit 0.5 with me and i um i've used everything out of it so many times that i just i like the little yellow bag because um, I, I think first aid kits are super um, important to keep the same uh, kind of package that you, because um, like if you get hurt and your backpack is somewhere where somebody else has to go get it, you can say, hey, grab the ye little yellow bag. You know what I mean? Like you can point them in the right direction easier. I don't know. This is something I, I like to do. And then I just fill it with Lugo tape and ibuprofen and Tylenol. And I've got like little tweezers in there for ticks and I've got band-aids and gauze and all the stuff and i i don't have stuff that i don't know how to use in there yeah i can yeah. go out yeah you, you don't want me to, I, i'm gonna i can i'm gonna talk you, i'll stop i'll stop it's I'll it's stop. one of those things too like i have been meeting and i haven't um taken like a wilderness first responder course um because once you're in a situation where you do have a medical emergency dan i'm sure you can attest this it just happens so fast and like it's it's just amazing how difficult it is to move a human body yeah, um, or, or to help somebody when, when, you yeah. know, when, when things go wrong. So like first aid, it's never how you think it's going to go down. Ever. It's never spectacular either. It's always like, Oh, I tripped, you know, it's not like anything yeah. cool, like, Oh, I fought off a grizzly bear. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I see in the a question in the chat right now that I think would be cool to field. Let's What's do the it. Coolest Onyx feature for newbies and intermediate. And I can speak to that because oh. I'm, you've only been doing this for like a year. So I'm kind of newbie intermediate. I think the best thing is it's a simple thing. It's just being able to point it and, and it shows your little arrow. So you're, it's just pretty much impossible to get lost because you can point it to different directions on trail, different, if the path splits, you, know, you can just point it and you, you know where you're going. So I would say that that's the, 
best one for newbie intermediate. I forgot to show that. Let me let me show let me show this to make sure that uh that comes through. So let's see. Uh, can you see my phone? Nice. Yep. So this one right here in the bottom corner. If you press this at any time, it'll like navigate to where you are. So here I am in Sedona. All the cool trails around here. Um, if you double tap this button right here, it brings out what I call the headlight. I don't know what our official name is for it, but it shows you your vision. So like as you twist and turn, it shows you which direction you're facing. And it, it you know, it's great. Cause like, sometimes if you don't have that feature, you're like walking down the trail and you see your line move in the wrong direction. You're like, oops, it's this way. Right. Like, so it's a really great feature yeah. to kind of show where you're at. Yep. Um, and now we know where the party's at tonight. We're all going to Matt's house. <laughs> Matt's, house. <laughs> Matt's house, everybody. You can buy me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm still offline. Yeah. And I wanted to show too. Yeah, with, my, <laughs> with my six pack that I brought in my backpack. What's that? With my six pack that I brought in my backpack. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> See, I wanted to show too, like just the 3D imagery around here as well. Like this on the phone, it works um, online, um, not offline. So actually like a lot of the hikes that are around in Sedona um, had service. So we were like up on this thing yesterday. And I was like, you know, how much further do we get around this point up here? So like, that is my like newbie feature is just like, oh, that is it's so a cool. little le of a learning curve to learn yeah. how to read the topo map. But like, when you look at this, you're like, oh, I get it. Like, this is going to be pretty exposed and pretty scrambly and very steep. Um, and you can really just like figure out like where you are and, and what you're doing. Um, so that's my newbie life hack. You got any one, Dan? Um, I, I, I think mine is probably, this is sort of the hack for when you can't get this, but I love that the trail is color coded for elevation. So I know like I can prep myself, you know what I mean? Like you can, you can tell if you, if you hike enough and you know your pace and you know what you do when you go up and down, you can sort of anticipate like how long it's going to take you to get somewhere by looking at the the color coding it's a little bit easier to read than the topo in my opinion yeah you for know? sure it's like and if that's right it's that's one of the things we're looking for too here's another like life hack is that these blue trails are kind of like an overlay for the rich content but if you're in here you can turn them off by hitting this activity type button and yeah. what that'll do is it'll expose your trail slope so it's color coded oh, based yeah, that's what do, yeah. the different parts are like on the actual trail so like yeah. you know when we were hiking up here Yesterday, we we're like, okay, we're at the steep part. Like, this isn't, you know, in that red line right there, like, this is going to be something else. So, um, yeah, that's that's my hack. Another one of my hacks. Spend a lot of time on the uh, Onyx backcountry app, if you couldn't tell. Um, cool. We had another question about uh, water filtration. So, Dan, like, any brands or any methods you recommend or anything you stay away from with water filtration? Uh, <clears throat> no, I'm a, I'm a recent uh convert to sawyer in a big way uh yeah. so I, I use them i think they're fantastic um but yeah i'm i i'd like to screw on filters uh and i usually use a smart water bottle as like a dirty water bottle um yeah. do you and you use any like uh, tablets or anything as well to I, I take i bring them with me i i don't i very rarely if ever use them yeah uh, but there i do bring them with me in case just in case your filter fails it's just kind of as a and they're because they weigh nothing right it's just a couple tablets you do not want to have Giardia in the Wind River Range. No, you do not, not want to have Giardia. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst, yeah. Well, sweet. I think we got through a lot of the questions that were presented to us. Um, anybody want to throw one more in? Nice. I think we got it. Well, on that note, Dan Emmett, thank you so much for joining. Um, and thanks to everyone who attended. Um, I hope this was educational and informational and even a little fun. Um, so yeah, thanks, Dan. Enter you got it. Pack. Hey, when do we, yeah, when do we find out who won? Do we find uh, out here or do they find out later? Um, we will, um, we're going to, we're going to do, we're going to pull it and they'll be notified via email. So oh, uh, probably okay. tomorrow. Uh -huh. I just got to right. run it tomorrow morning. Uh -huh. so. I have to call off the dancing bears then. <laughs> Oh no! You, wait, you had fireworks and everything yeah. back there. Yeah, I did. I did. I bought them all for this whole thing, and now I'm not gonna be able to use it. That's sweet. For next Thanks time, for having so me. For Seriously, time. this was awesome. I really yeah, appreciate I really everybody taking the time to come on. on and, yeah, totally. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, and thanks for everyone for joining. Um, chat looked like it was a really awesome scene as well. So, um, yep. 
Awesome. Well, with that, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do these around once a month. So if you'd like to learn more, you know, summer, winter, um, we're going to try to do some peak bagging ones, some wildfire prep ones, um, get a lot of ideas. So um, tune in next time and, you know, join up for our email list. Also, if you um, want to watch this one again, you'll be getting an email from us and this will also live on our YouTube channel. So check it out. All right, guys. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks, everyone.